Hello, Flight Simmers, and welcome back to another episode of Microsoft Flight Simulator. And today we are back in the Airbus A320 using the A32NX mod by Flyby Wire. This channel, as you guys know, we show the good and the bad, so I'm not going to leave anything out of my videos. If things go great, great. If things go wrong, we fix it in flight, and I leave that in the recording so we can all learn and get tips and better ourselves as sim pilots. Um, today we are going from Richmond, Virginia and working our way up to JFK in New York. Um, should be a pretty good flight. I'm hoping that everything goes well. Now, with that being said, the last couple attempts to fly the Airbus, I've seen uh, some pretty weird behavior ever since the latest patch. I don't think it has anything to do with fly-by-wire. They're obviously, as always, just kicking tail and turning names, right? Um, so I'm, uh, I'm pretty sure it's just the sim and, and in time things will get worked out as always. So... Throwing that disclaimer out there in case things don't turn out the way we plan, we'll adapt and uh, overcome it and do that pilot stuff that we do and get the aircraft and our passengers down safely. Now we are flying a very awesome uh, American Airlines 1950s livery that you can see here. It looks absolutely fantastic. Link to it's down in the description below. It's located on FlightSim.2's website. Absolutely love this. I think it's just such a cool uh, nostalgic uh, livery. Really, really awesome. Um, not sure what's going on with the jetway there, but uh, hope nobody trips and falls. That'd be a bad gap. Well, as long as it's closed up back there, we're good, right? Okay, liability insurance things out of the way. Okay, so with that all being said, let's go ahead and get into the aircraft. Now, as always, my flights are as detailed and as tutorial-based as possible. So I'm going to be showing everything that I do from starting up the aircraft, getting our ATIS information, moving on to sim brief, flight planning, you name it. Make sure you guys check the link or the time uh, bar down in the video for the specific chapters that are pertaining to something that you're interested in. Um, I try to break them down as small as possible. That way you can catch the sections that you want. Once again, as always, I will not leave anything out of the video. If I change altitude, change speed, turn, or change my coffee cup, I'll make sure to have that included in the video. So without further ado, let's get in the seat. Alright, so stepping into our big beautiful A320, the first thing that we are going to want to do is hit control and 8 to move up to the top panel here. Battery 1 on, battery 2 on. We can flip that external power on. We're going to leave the fuel pumps off for now. Same with the APU until we get uh, the fuel on board for today's flight. Once the aircraft is refueled, then we'll turn on the uh, pumps. ADRs 1, 2, and then 3. Oxygen supply for the crew. Emergency exit lights. Seatbelt signs on. That way passengers board and notice it down. And portable devices turned off. Wing lights on and logo lights on. We can bring up a little bit of lighting on the panel here if we choose, or you can come up here and turn the dome light on, which makes things obviously significantly easier for the startup process. Now let's go ahead and move on down to the cockpit pilot seat. We're going to turn our ND and PFD displays on, standby display, bring that brightness up. I wish there was a way to save the state of the aircraft. I hope that's something that eventually comes... You know, just with the lights. The lights is what I'd like to see where you can save so that we don't have to do this every time. But, you know, maybe that's probably realistic. It is a cold and dark state for a reason. Woo, excuse me. Been a long day. All right, let's get our brightness up over here. Lights back there. Okay, now, without further ado, let's step down and get our ATIS. I say that a lot, without further ado. I think I just like the way it sounds. Alright, so for those of you who are new to the A32NX mod, it brings a lot of features to the A320 that we would not have by using the uh, Sobo version of the aircraft. So first thing doing is I'm going to come to Options here. You can go to the AOC menu here, go into SimBrief. This is the same user ID that you would use to log into SimBrief well. So if I bring my SimBrief over here, you can see it right there. Overgo Productions. Type it in as exactly as you have it there. You can just copy and paste it in if you want to use the EFB, which we'll go over later on in flight. So you want to make sure that integration is set. Source for ATIS today, I'm actually going to try to switch to Pilot Edge. It failed me for the first time the other day. Okay, we're still on Pilot Edge here. And then now, let's go back to our Atsu menu. AOC again, ATIS, and let's type in where we are so we can plan our departure accordingly to the active runways. And hit send. All right, so as I was saying, as we're waiting for that, we can switch over and talk about the um, EFB for a second. You can come over to the EFB electronic flight bag. You see where the finger starts to appear and got, let's see here. Well, I guess all over the place now. 
Ah, all right, so I guess you can click anywhere on the screen. You used to have to click on a specific spot. Apparently, it's been a while since I paid attention to that. So we can click on that. You can turn this on with battery power without. First thing I like to do is come to company. Now, you can type in here using your keyboard. The problem is that the sim is also going to recognize any quick command, so I don't recommend doing that. The way that I recommend doing this, go to your sim brief, and um, let's see here. Well, let me just close it and restart it. It'll probably be easier. Launch my browser here. Go to sim brief. And what I like to do here is we'll go to the dispatch system, click on dispatch, and just copy it right out of here. So control C kind of thing here. Bring it over here, and then hit control V to paste, and you're done. Okay, and that sort of links that up. Now I do believe you have to do that with each new iteration of the aircraft that you put in, but uh, it will save as long as you're on the same flight. Um, all right, so with that in mind, let's come back to, we have a company message here, so we'll go back to our MCDU. And we're going to go to return to AOC menu, received messages, ATIS, and you want to make sure you click that it says new. Oh no, they let me down again. All right, so let's go to VATSIM. We'll try this again. This happens every now and then. Pilot Edge, I don't think it extends this far out, which is totally fair. They're great on the West Coast, but I think on the East Coast, uh, their service stops. Plus, I know they have a time frame, too, at which they're operating. So we'll go to a this again and switch to VATSIM and see if it's up and running. If not, we will Google it. The Googles. And do this one more time. So again, ATSU, AOC, ATIS, oops, K R I C, and send. Okay, and we'll just wait for that message to appear one more time. Hope you guys have all been doing well. It's been a while since we've been in the A320 together, so hopefully everything goes well today. And then back down here, we got our message. Return to AOC. Received messages. Again, click the new. Ah, oh, they let me down. All right, Google it is. So let's just do this. Alright, so pulling everything over here, we've got our METAR information. I don't know if it's going to give me the active runways, though. So we may just have to wing it. I'm only going to look for a quick second. If it's not here, we'll move on and just do it ourselves. Well, we can sort of figure this out. Let's see what the winds are. Uh, da -da 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 -da. Nope, that's all of that. Oh, that's not the METAR information. Alright, let me grab that. An easier way to do this. All right, so let's see what they're running today. We've got 15 degrees temperature, 2.3.3, altimeters 3023, winds 190 at seven knots, six knots. So let's check our Navigraph previous flight and find K Rick bring it up come on it helps when you hit the right button all right let's go taxi take a look at the airport info and if we're talking one nine or zero that's going to be two zero three degrees so our runway is likely going to be either runway two or runway three four but Given well no, so it's blowing one nine or zero, so sorry, it's gonna be runway two zero or one six. Two zero is pretty short, but it is the closest. What is that? Sixty six hundred feet versus nine thousand feet. I think we'll take runway one six. That's what we'll depart out of. Alright, cool. So let's move on. So we've quote unquote got our ATIS. It's not responding today. Sad sad panda. Um, but that's alright, it's the way it goes sometimes. And that just means the services aren't available. They don't have it, that information that we're looking for available there. So now let's get into the flight planning and then we'll enter into the computer. 
All right, so stepping on over into Simbrief, we're going to hit login here. I'm going to go create new flight. American Airlines, let's just pick any old flight number. 3541, sure, that sounds great. And I've never flown out of here before, so we're going to Kilo Romeo India Charlie. And we are going to Kilo Juliet Foxtrot X-Ray. Nope, KFJX. What's, wrong? What's the matter with me? No, 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 no. I can't do anything new, does it? Okay. How about... Kilo! I don't know where I got x-ray from. I have no idea. And we're going to be using the A320 profile for the A32 and X by Flyby Wire. A link for this profile will be in the description below if you guys want to add it. And it's a very large link. You can't miss it. There's nothing I can do about it. It's massive. Um, but if you guys want to add it, log into your SIM brief. Then on a separate browser, go to this video, go to the description, click on that link, and your SIM brief should ask you if you want to add this aircraft to your uh, uh, fleet. Just tell it yes. All right, so cost index. We're going to use a cost index of 60 as usual. We don't burn a ton of fuel, but we fly pretty quickly. Um, remember, cost index, basically the higher the number, the faster you go, more fuel you burn, and obviously the lower number, the inverse. Fuel factor, if you find that SIM brief is either A, not giving you enough fuel to complete your flights comfortably, or B, giving you too much, which is what I normally run into, you can adjust that with a fuel factor. So plus being, or P for plus, M for minus, we're going to subtract 30%. And so how this works is SimBrief will calculate the fuel that it wants to give you, then subtract 30% from that and give you what's left over. Okay? And what did we decide on 3-4, I believe, was the runway that we wanted? Uh, yes. And let me confirm that. Oh, no, it was 1-6, wasn't it? Oh, disregard. Disregard. Okay, so let's throw that back on there. My bad. And then the arrival, we'll see what happens when we get into JFK. Uh, let's see here. Let's go ahead and do a full flight today. Cargo. Let's set it up in the areas of, yeah, sure, 33.5 thousand pounds. We've got our route here. Let's go to Generate OFP, Operational Flight Plan. Normally, I would pick my own altitude, but since it, um, we're going on a pretty decently long flight. Not too bad, but long enough that I'm not too worried about it. Uh, we'll just ride whatever Simbrief wants to give us. And honestly, if I decide to change it, I can do that. So, we'll go print preview PDF. I prefer to do this. You can download it if you choose. Um, at this point, we're going to be using the SimBrief integration in the cockpit. So, most of this information is just going to be imported. But I like to leave this up just in case. And we will still need it for SIDS and STARS. Okay? And we'll talk about that here in just a second. So, we've got our flight plan created. Let's hop back into the seat. Start entering some numbers. All right. So, stepping back into the seat here. The first thing that I'm going to do... Uh, we already saw how we do the SimBrief integration, entering in our SimBrief username. So once you hit Generate OFP, okay, the Operational Flight Plan, that saves it in your SimBrief account. Okay, so at that point, once you hit that button, you can then start your import process if you choose. So we're going to hit Initialization. We're going to go to Initialization Request. I like to do this part first because it populates most of the information we need. And it looks like they've got us going to Flight Level 310, so that's not too bad at all. We can leave that as is. But you can see here's our flight. We're going from Richmond, Virginia to JFK, New York, American Airlines 3541, cost index, and the flight level that we just discussed. AOC, active flight plan uplink. This means your flight plan is actively being loaded as we speak. We can clear this. And then same thing with the rest of the data being uploaded. Now, the first thing I'm going to do here is I like to get my weights and balances going first. And I'm going to show you why in just a second. So we're going to go to MCDU. We're going to go to ATSU. AOC menu again. And now we're going to go to Performance, Weights, and Balance. And here we're going to hit Load. Okay, and if we pull up, we can see that it loads our fuel. And it's a block fuel that you're looking at. Then we're going to go to Page 2 and load our payload. And you can sort of see the aircraft kind of shifted there for a second. So we're looking for 131.7 on our zero fuel weight. So once we have those loaded, now what I like to do to save us some time later is I'm going to hit Control-8, go back to the overhead panel, flip our fuel pumps on, and get the APU started. That way we're ready for a taxi once we're done here because this next part, especially when you're not hearing me jab around, goes very quickly. 
So now from here, we'll go back down to the MCDU and we'll start configuring our flight plan. So the first thing I'm going to do is hit F plan for flight plan. Select our departure location. We still need to enter our SIDs and stars as I was talking about earlier. It has the All of our route between the SID and the star is uploaded by the data link. Okay, but the SIDs and the stars, we have to load in manually. And the biggest reason for that is because at the end of the day, you can hope for whatever SID or star that you want. And by the way, that standard instrument departure and standard terminal arrival route. Okay, star is the path at which you can take to enter into an airport SID is you're leaving okay so you can hope and plan for any SID or star you want but at the end of the day in in the real world ATC has the final say on that you can request whatever you'd like but at the end of the day they decide how you're leaving their leaving or entering their airspace so let's go ahead and click on K Rick for Richmond Virginia departure select our runway it's gonna be one six remember this time and now we're gonna look at our route which is typically on page two. And you can see here it is. It looks like the Lucy Lucille 6 and using the Lucille transition. So there's the Lucille 6. And I don't know if I ever say these things right. Half the fun is trying to figure out how to say these correctly. Now it doesn't show a transition here and that sometimes that's just the way it goes. So we'll just leave that as is. Um, it may still show up as one of the waypoints. So let's go ahead and hit insert. It's not there, it's not there. Don't burn a ton of time trying to figure that part out. Just get your flight going and again, do that pilot stuff as you need. Now, destination, JFK. We're gonna do the same thing and enter in our star. So first arrival, and then now, how are we going to roll in there? Okay, so um, two two right is the designated runway that we're using. Let's see what our options are. I wanna do an RNAV approach today if it's available on that particular runway, which I'm sure it is. And there it is, RNAV 2 2 right. So we're going to do an RNAV approach. Remember the difference between ILS and RNAV. ILS uses the instrument landing system, which is a um, network of systems down on the ground. I'm doing this very high level, but basically a beacon that the aircraft homes in on and provides both the glide slope, so your descent rate, and your um, localizer or your horizontal flight path and guides you down to the center line of the runway and at the proper altitude. Okay, um, RNAV is using GPS, so it does not provide a necessarily accurate uh, glide slope. You typically have to watch your altitude and really pay attention to where you're at on the descent. Now, I know that there are some stipulations to that. There are some caveats to that. There are some systems that do provide the full precision approach. I'm not getting into that. I'm just saying as a rule of thumb, RNAV going to be less precise than ILS in the aspect that it uses GPS versus actually having a device on the ground guiding you to the runway. Okay, so hopefully a little bit more challenging today, a little bit more fun. And so we are using, if we come back to our flight plan, uh, the Carmen 4 is, is that what that says? Cameron 4, sorry, Cameron 4 arrival. And so there it is right there. And let's see if we are using the DPK. It doesn't look like it. it looks like Cameron was our transition. But let's go ahead and scroll down. So what I like to do is go through the flight route. and see if that DPK is on here anywhere, which doesn't look like it, so it doesn't look like we're using it, but we may still use it onto the approach, but we're just going to, actually went here. Let's let's keep it thorough. Let's go to KJFK on our Navigraph, and this is one of the biggest reasons why I prefer Navigraph. Yes, it can upgrade your nav data, and I know that uh, Asobo is doing a great job at keeping that updated, but honestly, I really prefer Navigraph for the charts. All right, so here's Cameron. We were just talking about that. So we're coming in. Is there a phone number into Bowton? Cayenne. Using Cameron. And then from Cameron, let's look at the approach onto the 2 2 right RNAV. Let's grab that one. Vera. All right, it's coming in from down here. Deer Park VOR is what that is. So that's a VOR station. We go into the VOR, then we come on to Rivra, from Rivra on down into the approach. Fair enough. Okay, so we're going to leave DPK there. It looks like that's the way we're going to come in today. So we're going to go ahead and hit insert. And we can see exactly what we're doing. So we're coming onto the Cameron 4 star to the DPK VOR and then turning onto the RNAV approach. So it's funny, SIDs you sort of read backwards to verify them. And then let's go ahead and verify that the flight plan looks good. What I'm gonna do is hit Alt-1 here, 
And I can pull this guy up here. Oh, sorry, Alt-1 is my camera. It's a custom camera. You'd hit Control-1 if you don't have it. And what we're going to do is come to this um, rotary here, and we're going to change it to Plan. And then what I like to do is we can... You know what I can do, actually? Let's bring that back down. And by the way, Alt, right Alt, and click on the menu, on the screen that you want to pop it out like this. I just recently learned this. So now we're going to do is we're going to scroll through our flight plan and we're looking for any breaks, any discontinuities. A discontinuity can be like a waypoint that doesn't make sense with the flight plan. It can be a missing flight route where the aircraft doesn't know how to connect them. And we're looking for any backtracks and things like that. But that flight plan looked absolutely gorgeous. So we are done with the flight planning stage and are ready to get ready to configure the rest of the aircraft for takeoff. So let's get after it. All right, so coming back to our main menu here on the MCDU, the next thing that we're going to do is go back to the initialization page, and we're going to go to the right arrow to select initialization B. Zero fuel weight, zero fuel weight, center of gravity. We're going to give that a tap. You can see it auto-calculates it. Tap it again to bring it up. Now, what I won't do that with is the, is the fuel. Fuel, the easiest way to get this one, this part of why I leave this up until I'm done and ready to get out of here. Once I'm on taxi, I'm typically done with the sim brief, but... Um, as you can come up here, and we're looking for block fuel 9.4 right here. So we're going to grab that and throw in 9.4 for 9.4 thousand pounds. Let that information calculate. Go over to the performance page. We're going to be using flaps 1 for takeoff. You'll pretty much always be using flaps 1 unless you are super heavy or on a very slick or very, very short runway. Then you might use flaps 2 or 3, but almost always you'll be using flaps 1. Transition altitude in the United States, always 18,000 feet. Europe, always 6,000 feet. Anywhere else, you'll have to look it up because I don't know. Flex temp, we're not going to worry about flex temp today, but the, what this is is a D-rated engine performance based on outside temperature, basically keeping the engine from working harder than it needs to um, but in this particular state, uh, state we're going to just go full throttle to toga which is maximum power all right so now let's calculate our v speeds v1 this is the speed at which you must take off no matter what once you reach the speed even if you have an engine uh, an engine out you know a stroller falls out of the uh, um, you know back of the cargo empty stroller okay not trying to be morbid here you know, doesn't matter what happens at 130 knots, we must continue with the takeoff. VR, this is our rotation speed. And once we reach this speed, we would begin picking the nose up. And V2, this is the speed at which once the aircraft reaches, even if with an engine failure, the aircraft will continue to climb and accelerate. All right, so that's our performance numbers done. The next thing we're going to do is come up top. We're going to take our 135. Oops, if I use the correct key bindings. We're going to take our 135 and rotate this guy to 145. So we're doing 135 plus 10 in A320, 737, any aircraft similar size. And the purpose is for nothing more than it provides a better climb out. Um, different company policies, um, I believe, can also reflect what that number is. We're going to set our initial clearance altitude to about 12,000 feet for today. Um, again, simulated, of course. Simulating that we've also achieved our clearance, we're going to come down to our transponder. Now, you want to hit clear until the screen goes dark. Set in your transponder code and set that bad boy to auto or on. Leave everything else back here as is for the moment. I'm going to lock the cockpit door, though, because we are getting ready to get out of here. From this point, we'll come back up top. And we can see that the APU is started, so we're going to flip the beacon light on. We're going to terminate the external power. Once the APU started, you can terminate external power. You don't need the APU bleed on for the power. You just need the bleed on for engine start. But as we are getting close to engine start, we'll go ahead and flip that guy on as well. All right. So moving back to the forward part of the cabin here. Doing one last final sweep. We also need our altimeter, which we determined earlier was 3023. Pop that into the box. There we go. Set this back to ARC or NAV. Totally up to you which one you choose. We'll use NAV for today. Set our dip range as desired. Now this is the, just the display range. Uh, let's see here. Just walking through my configuration checklist here. I think we are ready to bunk out of here. I'm your Huckleberry. Let's go. All right. So aircraft is set now it's time for pushback and engine start 
All right, so what we're going to be doing here is I'm going to toggle our pushback. Once the gateway pushes back, we'll get the command to release the brakes once the dug is hooked up. As the, engines, as the aircraft starts pushing back, we'll get authorization to start our engines. We can go ahead and turn the engine master mode switch to ignition right now. But once we get permission to start, we will rotate engine 2, continue to turn the cutoff off, start our chronometer. Once engine 2 is idle at 19% on the RPMs, we will reset the chronometer and turn on engine 1 and rinse and repeat. Pretty simple process, not too hard to follow, so I hope you guys enjoy this little adventure. Cockpit ground, request received, Doug is on its way. So thanks for choosing American. We're happy to be your airline. Now if you'll just right, follow Captain along Toad, with me, we'll be on our way. Alright, Captain is inserted and we are ready to get you out of here. Go ahead and release that parking brake. Yeah. Welcome aboard. Before we depart, here are some important safety instructions. First things first, let's buckle those belts. Insert the metal end into the buckle and pull right, the strap to tighten. To open, simply lift on the top of the buckle. If you're seated in the premium cabin and your seat is also equipped with a shoulder belt, fasten the belt by attaching it to the buckle until you hear a click. If you're seated in the premium cabin and your seat is equipped with a push button, insert the metal fitting into the buckle and pull the strap to tighten. Then fasten the shoulder belt by attaching it to the buckle until you hear a click. To open, simply press on the button. The shoulder belt must be worn during taxi, takeoff, and landing. And remember, seatbelts should be fastened whenever you're seated, just in case of unexpected turbulence. To get us on our way, make sure your seat is up, all electronic devices are put away, and your tray table is stowed. If you have a carry-on, push it all the way under the seat in front of you. If it won't fit, place it in the overhead bin. If you have a handheld device, please switch it to airplane mode now. You'll find our full electronic device policy okay, Captain, in the back of your American way. U.S. law prohibits smoking, including electronic cigarettes, at any time. Tampering with, disabling, or destroying smoke detectors in the laboratories may result in a fine. U.S. law requires all to comply with lighted and posted signs and crew member instructions. Now let's review the safety card. Please pay close attention, and before you know it, we'll be off. All exits on this airplane are clearly marked. Take a moment to locate the nearest one. Keep in mind, it may be behind you. All exits have evacuation slides to use in an emergency. When directed to exit, jump onto the slide and move away from the airplane. at every door can be detached and used as racks. You'll find the exact location on your safety card. This aircraft is designed with escape lighting on or near the floor. A sign will indicate you have reached your exit. In the event of an evacuation, escape path lighting will appear. Follow the lights until you've reached your exit. Leave all carry-ons behind. Just head quickly and safely to the nearest exit. And don't forget, it may be behind you. Alrighty, so had to make her be quiet for a minute. Both engines are started. Next thing we're going to do is max brakes. Our auto brakes to max in the event of a rejected takeoff. Set our TCAS to TA or TARA, depending on the airspace you're in. We're going to rotate our flaps down to flaps 1 for takeoff. Set our engine master mode back into the normal position. We can terminate the APU bleed. Terminate the APU. Nose wheel light to taxi. Runway turn off lights as required. And we... Oh, predictive wind shear turned on. 
Weather radar, totally your call. I prefer to leave it off. And speed brakes set to armed. We're spoilers. Some people get triggered when I say speed brake. Uh, let's see here. And I think, other than that, folks, we are ready to get out of here. Oh, well, one more thing. We can come up here to our uh, up front control panel or yep, autopilot panel. Constraints on, flight directors on. And now, we're set. So we're going to release that parking brake and start taxiing to the runway. Now, I did sort of taxi us in the wrong direction, so oops. As the video stated, ladies and gentlemen, the flight attendants will be in the cabin to do one last safety check before our departure. To so please make sure that your seat backs are in the upright position. Your tray tables are stowed, your seat belts are fastened, and your cell phones are in airplane mode for our departure. We appreciate your cooperation. And for those of you who have been reporting on my channel about stutter heaven ever since the last update, me too, guys. Me too. So taxi on a straight line, we should be between 20 and 30 knots as long as there are no obstructions and nothing is uh, in danger. Um, we don't want to be turning her below 10 knots, even though I just was. Or above 10 knots, excuse me. This is two zero. on strobe lights on take off configuration check give the cabin a ring start that chronometer power to 50% stable maximum power and toga down pressure on the uh, nose about two to three degrees until we exceed 80 knots. 80 knots cross-checked. So I'm pretending that I've looked over there. Approaching V1 and rotate. Positive rate, gear up. up. Alright, we're now in the climb mode, so I'm going to pull the throttles back to the climb position. 
and engage the autopilot. Looking good. That livery, isn't it awesome? I think it's beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. So at this point, we'll be holding tight until we get to about 10,000 feet, and we'll shut our lights off. While we're going through there, we can start looking at the EFB a little bit. So since we entered our company name here, we come to the dashboard and click on From Simbrief. And it's neat because you can get your METAR information here. I actually didn't need to Google it, but we can see what it is down in JFK, especially as we get there. You can also click the link to MCDU button, I believe it would do the same thing, but I don't know if that's actually functioning yet. You get a moving map, sort of getting an idea of where we are here. Um, so it sort of helps plan the route. doesn't lay the route out yet that I'm aware of, but I believe that is something that's a work in progress. Come to the dispatch page, gives you all the uh, current weights and balances of the aircraft. The load sheet, here's our flight plan uh, that we loaded, uh, integrated from SimBrief. Now what I haven't figured out to do, and I don't know if there is a way, no is to pan it. Um, so that's part of why I don't use it yet and I may be missing something. But uh, anyway, so that's coming. Fuel's still not, payload's not. Flight performance, you get now a performance calculator and uh, we'll go over that later when we take a look at the descent. I'll show you guys that. And then the ground features that are yet to come for the EFB. So pretty neat stuff. Once again, fly by wire, making a name for themselves, kicking some tail, man. And uh, can't wait to see what they come up with next. These guys are just absolutely on it. Fantastic work. So let's see how we're looking here. Oh, we're at 11,000 feet. My bad. So we're going to accelerate our climb here. Move it on up to 24,000 feet. And you can see we've come out of the climb because we got too close to our altitude. I believe it's going to 1,000 feet. Once this switches to altitude, you need to come back to your altitude knob here. And we're going to give it an up arrow click. And that will put it into Manage Climb. And she'll continue to climb out. Alright, but we can also now turn our lights off. Oop, I hate that. Leave all your top row lights on. Just turn the bottom ones off. Landing light, runway turn off light, and nose wheel light. We can disarm the spoilers now that we're up. Next change will be up at 18,000 feet when we switch from uh, our current barometric setting over to standard of 2, 9, -er, nine -er 2. So just sort of enjoy the view until then. Shouldn't be much more than a minute or two and we'll be there. couple of cool little features. The next segment of the guide I'll be releasing for this one this weekend. Um, nothing too fancy, just a, a minor update, quality of life update if you will. It's going to be on uh, customizing the A320. Alright, so from here we're going to click our down arrow on the altimeter knob, or on the uh, barometric pressure knob. Well, yeah, altimeter knob. That's what I meant. 
and now we can see we have switched over to standard which is, again is 2 9 or 9 or 2 all right so from here it's a smooth and steady climb up to our cruise altitude which we can go ahead and set now of 31,000 feet no other changes planned at this time if anything else goes on then I will definitely get back with you guys but at this point just sort of uh, enjoy a few minutes of the cruise and uh, when I come back to the recording here we'll be at least planning for our descent And we do thank you for your attention. Once we have reached a safe and comfortable cruising altitude, your flight attendants will be throughout the cabin to offer you beverages of your choice, followed by our international flagship meal service. During the course of our flight, snacks and beverages will be available. If at any given point you wish to sleep undisturbed, we do ask that you kindly display all fastened seatbelts on the outside of all garments or blankets. So as your crew does do free and safety checks, and tell you to see yourself but will, will result in having to awaken you for compliance. We thank you in advance for your cooperation. Alright everybody, so we're getting close enough. You can see we're being required to enter in destination data, so it's about time to start looking into our descent. So as we do so, I figured I'd show you something cool on the EFB. We can go to performance page here. You can see what our current speed is. 478 knots. That's ground speed. But what we can do is type in our current altitude. You can see it's 31,000 feet. Target altitude is 13 feet, so we really could just hit zero. And you can see it's telling us that we should be starting our descent 97 nautical miles away. And you can see here we're just about 100 110 miles away so it's about time to start planning for that so all we're going to need to do is we're going to take this guy right here and start taking him down all the way to about 1,000 feet and we should see the aircraft begin to descend here in a minute Oh, it helps if I actually tell it to descend. <laughs> so you have the up arrow, which puts you into a managed descent, which will use the aircraft speed and follow the three degree glide slope. Or you have an open descent, which the aircraft will not adjust its speed and maintain the current airspeed and descend at that speed. So we're going to use a managed descent and sort of step our way down here. You can see we're at a flight restriction of flight level 030 here for a second. But once we pass that, we should continue the descent. Now, the other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to use my EFB over here to get our destination information. So, let's see here. KJFK, what I'm really looking for, you can see here's our wind speed, 190 at 13 knots. And then what I'm looking for is our temperature, 9 degrees Celsius, and our altimeter of 3010. So, let's go down to our MCDU. And we're going to here clear that destination data. And we're going to go to the performance page. We're going to go to next phase and go into the approach. So, again, the altimeter was 3010. Put that down. Temperature was 9 degrees. Wind was 1904, 13 knots. Transition altitude, again, always 18,000 in the U.S. Decision height, we're just going to use 200 feet. What this is, is at 200 feet, if for any reason we do not have visual confirmation of the runway, we would call a missed approach and go around. All right, and that is all we need for here. We can see our approach speed for looking for uh, 130 knots. Landing speed should be approximately 125 knots. All right, so let's come back to our flight plan. And from here, the aircraft, you can see we are descending which we're actually descending past the flight restriction, which is kind of odd. We shouldn't in a managed descent, but that's all right. Just means the constraints aren't being honored right now. Not going to be worrying about that too much. Put our speed into managed mode by giving it an up click. And that way, when the approach mode begins, she'll automatically begin slowing down to the approach speed that we just designated. 
So from here, I'll just be managing our descent, making sure that we don't over descend, sort of keeping an eye on things, keeping this out to about 80 miles. You can see there is our DPK uh, VOR that we'll be using to navigate to the approach. So uh, from here, just a nice smooth transition down, 18,000 feet. We'll set our altimeter back to the barometric pressure and then set it for a 3010 as designated. Look at that, that's a pretty shot. Sometimes, man, sometimes the sim gets you. This reminds me of like something out of the Memphis Bell. Every time I see a scene like this, uh, and for those of you who know, I'm talking about like when they, uh, they'd actually be in the climb in this part, but when they first take off in the bell and they're climbing through the clouds and they get right to the top of the clouds and there's that B-17 they almost smack into the middle of. Yeah. For those of you who haven't seen it, the Memphis Bell movie, Sean Austin's in it. Um, uh, gosh, why can't I think of his name? Um, the tail gunner, for those of you who know. Oh, his name is Clay in the movie. Why can't I think of his name? Anyway, if you haven't seen The Memphis Bell, really awesome movie, really enjoyable movie. It's an old movie. Um, I won't say back in the either 90s or late 80s for The Memphis Bell, but really cool movie. Um, gives a pretty good depiction of what it must have been like being in one of those bombers way up at that altitude, freezing your tail off. But um, anyway, check it out if you haven't seen it. I think you'd really enjoy it. All right, so I will catch you guys as we get a little further down to the scent. Like I said, 18,000 feet. I will be switching over the altimeter, but I'll make sure I have that in the recording, so stand by. So, real quick, we got an anti-ice warning, so we're going to go to Control-8. Now, they should be set in auto, but we're going to go up to our icing panels and turn these on. Same thing with the probe heat, just in case. And then once the ice is clear, the caution lights should go out. And you can see they're already gone. Alright, and we're approaching 18,000, so I'm going to switch this back into uh, the standard pressure here, or the barometric pressure, and set it to our arrival pressure of 3010. Alright, and from here, just a matter again of continuing our descent, we have a restriction of 3,000 feet, which will be down here at DPK at the VOR. Um, so just uh, enjoy the scenery, and uh, we'll be landing shortly. All right, so we're coming in now on 10,000 feet. So just like before, we're going to go back to the overhead panel and start turning some lights on. So landing lights, runway turnoff lights, and for landing, we want the taxi light. Sorry if you guys can hear the fan whispering in the background. That is actually for my... Oh, hey, I left the dome light on. Um, that's actually for uh, my 3D printer. And we're low enough now. I think we can turn the anti-ice back to auto. Now, this D that you see here bring this up a little bit easier to see this is our decel point once we reach here the approach mode will activate automatically or the approach phase I should say not the approach mode but the approach phase of our MCDU so if we go to performance next phase this approach phase this will activate once we reach that decel point back to our flight plan actually we can leave the performance data up Now, as your descent rate slows down here, this is where you sort of want to be watching things. We need to be at 3,000 feet uh, by the VOR. So we still have 25 miles, but our descent rate just slowed down a lot. And the aircraft, it's because the aircraft's deselling, slowing down. But uh, let's see if we can speed that process up a little bit, help it along with a little bit of spoiler. There she goes. All right. that back. Looking pretty good so far. Looking really good actually.
I don't think there's anything we're missing prior to landing. I don't think so. So, you know what I'm going to do? Is I'm going to be managing our descent, making sure that we don't uh, break our 3,000. So once we get to... You know what? I'm actually going to set that. Let's set our altitude to 3,000 feet. And that way... Once we get to DPK, she'll uh, level up. Because we need to be at 3,000 by Rivra, too. Once we get to Rivra, we'll be on the approach. And uh, time to configure for landing. So I'm going to catch you guys as long as everything goes well. Um, once we get around uh, to Rivra. If anything goes south or any adjustments I need to make to the aircraft, I'll make sure you guys are included. But uh, we should just come down to 3,000 feet and make the turn. So really, we need to be at 3,000 by river. So as long as we make 3,000 by then, which I can't see any reason why we wouldn't. And just for the record, just because it just happened, we reached our decel point. You can see that approach speed now activated. Okay. So now it's going to start slowing the aircraft down closer to that airspeed. Actually, I'll just keep you guys on board here. And we stopped descending because she's slowing down again. And this is our target speed right here that we're going for based on our current position. And so once we reach that, the aircraft will begin descending again. So again, we're just managing the descent here. Keeping you guys on board just in case I have to make an adjustment. I don't think we're going to... No, I think we're going to be fine. I'll catch you guys when we get to Rivra. Alright guys, so we did make it to our altitude of 3,000 without problem, but the aircraft continued to descend. So what I did was switch this up to 4,000, then back to 3,000, then did an up arrow here to put her back into an open climb back to our altitude. Um, not sure why I did that. It's supposed to stop when it reaches our altitude. There may be a bug going on, which again, totally fine and understandable. Seems like there's some quite a few odd issues with the sim in general since this last update and that's not a shot in a sobo it's it's the nature of of what we do here but uh anyway that is something that's going on here so let's see what our distance is from the airport we're about 20 miles out should be about 10 miles at rivra so it looks like we're getting to some nasty weather here too notice that as well so it's gonna get funky here for a minute Too much longer here. So as we're getting in closer to our approach, we can also set our 
Auto brakes, we're going to use low. We have quite a big runway to go with. Shouldn't be too much of an issue. And you see what I mean by sim brief? I, it still gave me way too much fuel. I mean, we asked for a thousand pounds over plotted. That's seven thousand pounds there. Call it six thousand by the time we land. Um, even if we had to divert, I don't think we would need six thousand pounds on on board to do so. So, you know, you gotta play with it a little bit. Figure out what works best. Checking all lights are good. Everything else is set. All right. It's time to do that pilot stuff and get our people home. Alright. That's pretty. I like living in the desert. I really do. I'm one of those weird people who just really doesn't mind it, but... Seems something like this every day wouldn't be bad either. But then again, the problem with cities is when you're down in the city, they look like every other city, in my opinion. Uh, with the exception of landmarks, don't nobody get huffy puffy at that comment. I'm just saying, you know, get it. Each city has their unique features that you know are are theirs and their own, and and to be proud of. I'm not trying to say you can't. Just saying, man. Nobody get their their twisties all bunched up. Alright, so eight miles from Rivera. And so we won't need the LS mode, we won't need the localizer today, because we're using the RNAV approach. So again, that's using satellite GPS. What we are gonna do is once we turn on the final here, we're gonna set our altitude down to about 1,000. I'm gonna go ahead and set that now. Actually, I'm gonna set it all the way down to 100 feet. I don't think I can set it down any lower than that. Nope. All right, guys. So, unfortunately, my recording cut off. And I was unable to... Um, recover the missing information here, so I need to catch you guys up real quick. Once we made the turn at Rivra, we began descending from 3,000 down to 1,000. The aircraft started descending much too quickly, um, so I put it into approach mode. Now, once we got this approaching this previous waypoint, we were under altitude restrictions, so the aircraft stopped descending. Once we passed over, the aircraft's continuing its descent. Now we're passing through five miles, so I'm going through the landing gear down, going for flaps full here at this point so how it works is about 10 miles you want flaps one between seven and eight miles flaps two five to six miles flaps three gear down um, between five and four, four miles five and three miles you want uh, full flaps landing configuration and stabilized Shouldn't have to put that onto the landing light, but all right. Yeah, no, that should be taxi for landing. All right, so now what we're looking for is whenever you're comfortable at this point, you take control of the aircraft and land the plane. Which I'm gonna go ahead and do now, disengaging the autopilot. You don't want to follow the flight directors at this point because they're taking us to 100 feet. Remember, there's no glide slope on an RNAV approach. Again, general rule of thumb, there are exceptions to that. Getting some bad stuttering here. Continuing.
There's the flare call. My throttles are at idle. And normally I would use the thrust reversers, but we just, we didn't need them. Oh, I thought they were at idle. Oops. Alright, well, we made it. No biggie, right? I don't know why that view got me so messed up. So at this point, we're going to taxi off the runway. Whew, almost 20 knots. That was dumb. Fail. Alright, so at this point we'll stop the aircraft. We'll clean it up. Flaps come up. Make sure the spoilers are disarmed. Auto brake is clear. It's weird, didn't engage. And we can turn our landing lights off. Make sure nose wheel lights on the taxi light. Strobe light comes off. And we taxi to our gate. I'm going to go ahead and leave you guys here. It has been a very long day, but I truly hope you guys enjoyed this flight. I hope you learned something, or at the very least found it entertaining. And as always, be sure to hit that like and subscribe. Comment down below on your thoughts, questions, comments, etc. And be sure to hit that bell for notification of future content, as there's going to be a lot more coming. Take care, guys. Be well, and I'll see you in the next one.